Hey everybody, back with another Sencor video here. I've had my CR7000 for quite a while and I've done many videos with it. It is the probably the best tube restorer out there. Um, but I figured what I would do is I was able to pick up some additional Sencor CR uh, tube restores and I would do a review and fix or repair on each one of them. So we got the Sencor 143 and the 161 and then the Big Mac Universal Tester which is, I can't remember the name, I think it's like a 168 or something like that, I'm not sure. I'll look up the number but um, this thing definitely bigger than the other two. So we're going to start with the Sencor CR143, which is the oldest and not very um, likely useful for a lot of arcade stuff unless you want to build some adapters and maybe do some manual gun switching. I'm going to go into that in a second. I've never used this one before. We're going to do it together. Open it up, investigate, learn about it right here in this video. All right, so now that I've you're done watching part one um, this is going to be part two here and we're ready to actually test a monitor with the universal adapter that I just made I will um, make a couple comments here so basically right, so the original um, CR143 tube setup tester is not going to have this tube in here which is a it's the 19J VJTP22. I doubt that's going to be in here. I'll look for it and, and highlight it if it is. Um, but CRT, the Sencor, when they made like CR161s and 31As and all that, you know, later models of the tube restores, um, in the back of a couple of these books, and you can find, I'll link to, um, I'll link to something that actually uh, shows this, but you can find 1981, 1993, you can find them online, basically. But in the back of the book, it basically says, um, gives you some specific instructions for a CR143. Hopefully you can see this a little bit. Um, it basically says, for more accurate results, use this book, and if the bias, the G1 bias in this book shows as A, set my G1 bias of the CR143 to 20. If the bias says B, set it to 35. If the bias says C, set it to 50. D, set it to 70. So this book is kind of telling you that. It also says that CR143 can be updated to test some, but not all new CRTs if the adapter socket is connected in the following way. And then it tells you basically to short pins 2, 3, and 7 together, um, which is the cathodes and we don't want to do that because our we're going to test the, the K's separately we're not going to short them together um, and let's see here it says this modification will allow some replacement adapters to be used the following adapters will not work on CR143 and it gives us the adapter number 23 which is the fat neck tubes and I think socket 7 might be the skinny neck tubes that we use in arcades but regardless we're playing it safe we're going to use 1k we're not going to short them out and then it talks about some replacement sockets etc but again it has a warning here which says with an asterisk do not use that socket with the CR143 so instead what we're going to do is we're going to use this book just to look up our tube number which is 19JVTP22 and then we're going to get our bias setting that way. Right, this book, gosh, it's pretty bad. Let's see here if I can zoom in on here. That is tube type, filament, bias, socket, anode, kilovoltage, and focus volts. It actually gives you some interesting information there. But we're looking for 19VJTP22. We have 6.3 heater volts. Our bias is D, which should be 70 um, volts. Um, negative G1 bias, and it is a 23, socket 23. 
And so we know that socket 23 doesn't work with this, but we're going to use our universal one and figure it out. All right, so let me come over here and let's see here. Um, all right. So on a CR23 socket, we know our filament volts goes to 9 and 10. And so we're going to do our F1, which is our blue, I think. Right now it's our black. F1 goes on, goes on pin 9. And I really need two hands for this. Try to lower this down just a little bit. All right, F1 black goes to pin nine, and basically this is uh, pin 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4. 4 and 12 are not connected, so 12, 12 11, 10, 9. Is that filament voltage? Then my other filament voltage, F2, goes to pin 10. And then let's do RK goes to pin 8. So we're hooking up our red K. So that's 9, 8. And then pin 7 is G2. Right there. And pin 5 is G1. All right, and we have our universal adapter hooked up. And then we're going to plug in our adapter here. Let's see. Just like that. And I kind of want to arrange this so... I can actually use one of these to probe and get some voltage readings. Let's see. Can I use that one there? Yes. Red, green. The colors are off, obviously. Yellow is... Um, I should be able to do that. All right, let me come right back. All right, so I set it up so I can actually film the tube, my meter, <clears throat> um, and the restorer all together. And just so you know, in the... CR143 original setup book. There is no 19V anything that I can find. Um, it does go in alphabetical order in this book. Not all books do that. But yeah, there's no 19V JTP. So anyway, so we have to use the new book. But really, it's only you could just set this up for G1 bias. Negative G1 bias, just set it at 50. You don't have to, you know, do A, B, but whatever. It said D in the other book, which is actually 70. So we'll set it up. But first thing we need to do is adjust our line voltage. So we're going to turn on our restorer. And you're supposed to go to, obviously, the line adjust after it heats up. Now, the nice thing about setting up the universal adapter this way is I actually have a socket that's easily probable and let me go ahead and adjust my line to the line adjust and in the previous video we saw that um, I was using a 5 ohm resistor and not a 5.7 ohm resistor so I expect this to be off somewhat I'm going to probe right here and we're getting 6.5 volts so we're a little bit off so let me go ahead and adjust that down to 6.3 volts just like that. So now our heater voltage is set directly, even though it's off the line adjust, it is set directly at 6.3. Um, when I get the right ohm resistor, um, we'll reset that, so it recalibrated, so it's actually 6.3 when I set it there. All right, so the next thing we want to do is check for shorts. And so when we go to the short screen, um, it's basically measuring, it's going to be these two neon lights here, and, you know, if both of them don't light up, we have no shorts. If this one lights up and this one doesn't, it's an H to K short. If both light up, it's a K cathode to G1 short. 
and if um, this one lights up and this one doesn't, it's a G1, the G2 um, short. If they're solid, it's a dead short, and if they're flickering, it just means that there's a there's leakage basically, and um, there's you know basically it amount of resistance or it's in the mega ohms um, of leakage. So that is the shorts, and let's go ahead and do that. And we see that there's no shorts. I don't see any neon lights on. I know this is a good tube. I've already tested it multiple times. I use it to test chassis and stuff, so I know it's good. So then the next thing we're going to do is we should set our G1 bias at 70. So let's go ahead and go to emissions. And we're going to put our black lead into the cathode to measure here. We're going to change our voltage to DC. I think. There we go, DC. Okay, and so we're going to put our black lead into the cathode, which is right there. And then we're going to put our red lead into G1, which should be right here. And we have negative 64 volts, as you can see there. And we're going to just adjust this until we get into the negative 70 range. Just like that. Now, in theory, you shouldn't have to do this. We'll go through some adjustments maybe in another video. Maybe we'll you know, see if the resistors are correct. I don't know. But it's obviously off. So I'm being extra careful and I'm just showing you um, the, the voltage measurement. So then um, we want to check we want to raise our emissions until we get this line into the cutoff and again we're only looking at the red gun so let me to put my color gun on red we don't need to look at anything except for red because we only have one RK here and let me put my red lead into my G2 which is right there I believe Yep, and I'm at 21 volts. We're going to move this up until we get into the cutoff range, to that cutoff line. And I'm working around the camera here. There we go. About 283 volts. Whoops. And what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to make a note of that on my notepad here that when hooked up to the red gun cutoff is 284 because we don't want this to be too far off and because we're doing one gun at a time um, I can't just switch this gun selector to green and then measure it and then select it to blue and then measure it I have to kind of do it all at the same time Yeah, about 280, that looks right, 281. About 200, I'll do 281 volts there. All right, cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to test our emissions. And let's see here. The way we do that is just hit this emission switch, and if it goes into the good range, we know it's fine. We're going to make a note of what it is. Now it is bouncing around a little bit, which is kind of interesting. We want it to stabilize. All right, and it finally stabilized at 100. And now this, I believe, is measuring a, like a microamps, but I'm just going to make a note of that, that it, it sta went to 100 and stabilized. All right. For emissions. And we can also check our color tracking right here. So we're going to push this and we basically are, we don't know which is our highest gun yet. So I think I'm going to come back to color tracking because we kind of need to know where the highest gun is reading and I'm just going to leave is this all the way set backwards 
Oh no, I, so I do have to adjust it. I press the color tracking, which basically removes the G1 bias. Actually, I could prove that here in a second. And we want to adjust the highest gun to that line. So I don't know which one's the highest gun yet, but I'm going to adjust it to the color calibration line. Just assuming red is the highest. If we come back and, I, and it's different for blue and green, we'll, we'll make a note of it. And let me see, do I want to, let me check the G1 voltage real quick. G1 is green right there. Negative 71 volts, so it changed a little bit on me. But if I press this button, see how it goes to zero? So when I press the color tracking, it's basically removing the G1 bias. And kind of what we're doing is a high, the equivalent on a CR7000 is a high um, color tracking balance but we have to do it individually for each gun. And let's see, that's the emissions. Yeah, now we just have to re, you know, do that for the other gun. So I'm going to remove this. I would suggest turning it off probably is the safest way. Oh, one thing we could do is a life test. So we're still on emissions and do a life test? No, do I have to hold press? For a life test, I think I have to hold the emission button here and then press life simultaneously. And you're basically seeing how fast it decreases to see how much tube um, life on the guns is. What it's doing with the life test is it's basically withdrawing some of the heater voltage and it's showing you how susceptible your cathode gun um, is to loss of heater voltage. If it drops very quickly, like we just saw, there's probably not a lot of life left on the tube. There, there we are. We have our G1 bias went all the way basically to zero. And we're going to hit our life. And it goes to bad after about, what, five seconds. So probably not a lot of life left on these guns. Let me pause and come back. Okay, so I moved my R, my K, which is just R K, but whatever. I'm keeping on red. I moved my K to green because we have to test each gun individually. We're going to go turn back on and let our heater voltage. Now I shouldn't have to update this. I'm just leaving it at the same setting it was at before. If I go right here and then go to AC. We're at 6.4 volts, so as long as it's the same, we're not, you know, putting too much voltage on the heater. It is a little bit high, but it's not like drastically high. It's only 1.1 1. 1 volt off. All right, so now we're back to DC, and I want to go into my. We're not going to touch our G1 at all because our G1 is going to stay the same for all of our tests. But I need to come back into my G2 which is um, red over here, right there. We're going to go to emissions. All right, and so basically my green gun, oh no, that's shorts. <laughs> that's shorts right there. We have no shorts on our green gun. Now if I went to emissions, it raised a little bit on the cutoff. Let me put my black lead to yellow right there. Okay. And we probably can adjust it down just a little bit. But it's pretty close. About 275, 271, about 10 volts less. So that means our green gun is just slightly better. So we're going to do green right here. Cut off. Just do a percentage. 271. Can't really talk. All right. And then we want to do our emissions test. And we're at 100. Interesting how what the G1, G2 voltage is reading when I drop the bias down to zero, how the 
the voltage drops a little bit. That's interesting. I've never done that before on any restore. So we're, uh, I should have, I shouldn't hold that emissions test for too long actually. So you want to test it and then kind of take a good reading and then let it go. You don't want to just sit there and hold it like that. Let me go ahead and measure this. All right, DC. So we're going to hit it again. Emission test. And then we'll hit our life test. Much slower. Green gun is definitely better. We'll let it cool just a quick second. Still at 270 volts. And let's press our color tracking. Now you can see it's slightly higher. So the green, we're going to have to adjust our color tracking down just a little bit because it was higher than the red. Okay. And we're good there. So what I'm going to do is our green are definitely the strongest of the guns, especially you can tell in the color tracking. I'm going to pause. We're going to test blue. All right. I moved my K over to pin 11, which is our blue gun. We're going to turn... Get our heater voltage back on. I'm not going to measure it again. Should be we didn't mess with our line adjust, so it should be should be the same. Why why is our line adjust actually lining up correctly though? I <laughs> kind of let me let me go ahead and measure it. Black and red. All right, still six point four. That's fine. All right, so we want to go K in there, DC power. Okay, we're going to check for shorts. Got no shorts. The emission, 275 volts. We're just above the cutoff, so we're going to come down just a little bit. All right, 265. So I bet blue is even going to be stronger than our other one. Blue is at 265 volts for a cutoff. So red is the worst off. Green is a little bit better. And blue is the strongest. Um, and we can figure out how much difference. You don't want them to be more than 1.5 times or something like that difference. Or like 25 percent within a 25 percent ratio or something the cr7000 manual i think says 25 percent this one said within 1.5 of each other it's kind of a manufacturer spec thing all right let's go to emissions we're at 100 just slightly above it i'll go ahead and do my life test pretty good and then it's back at the cutoff. And then we want to push our color tracking button. Now this one's a little bit lower, so I'm not going to mess with it. Because our color tracking was already adjusted to the color calibration line. Oh, this one's raising a little bit. <laughs> um, it's basically already adjusted. Now it's slightly above. So I, this one does look like it's the best. So I need to lower it down a little bit. So when I adjust the green, I mean, my green blue into the color calibration line because it was the highest gun, I go back and remeasure red and green. And as long as they're within this range, within that color tracking box that you see right there, hopefully you can see that on camera, um, we're good. I can already tell you I know they're going to be good just based off of how little I had to move it for each one. Red was kind of like in the middle there and I had to adjust it and then blue I had to adjust it down green I had to adjust it down a little bit so I'm sure we're gonna be fine but we know red's the worst one off so let me just come back and do red real quick go ahead and turn this off take my red I'm just being extra careful by turning it off and red needs to go on to what pin four eight pin eight so that's um, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. For example, we'll go back 
to align and adjust. Let the tune warm up just a little bit. Go to emissions. And if I press this color tracking, if this red falls within that color track, I know my tracking is good, my high tracking. And it is, it is on the lower side, but you can see that it's still within range, obviously. So this tube is tested fine. Now I'm not gonna do any of the read you functionality here in this video. I just wanted to show you, this is what a working, a known good tube um, I've already probably restored it on my CR7000, and I know it's pretty good. And that is how you can use an old CR143 with a universal adapter and just testing one gun at a time. You can still, you know, test um, tubes and stuff, and you can still use a rejuve functionality. This one has, um, you know, rejuve one, two, and three. I'll come back and do another video when I find a bad tube and then I fully calibrate the CRT 143 champion. So quick video, hopefully, I don't know how long that was, but till next time guys, cheers.